please do not do this at home. This is not instructional. This is not a tutorial. This isn't even educational. This is just me doing a thing for my own and hopefully your entertainment purposes. I make no claims as to how scabbards are made. If you come into my comments about historical accuracy, I will add glitter to this thing, I swear to the gods. Right. Hello lovely folks. This is a little bit more of a freeform creation thing. So, if things seem a little bit haphazard, a little bit noisy, um, that is because I don't usually create this way uh, in terms of videos or in terms of art. Excuse me, another bump. There we go. Let me just put all of my fineries in one spot, particularly this, because that I'm going to lose. Right, click, recording apparently. So I'm sitting here waiting for the power to go out because we have our scheduled power out coming out soon. And um, I don't usually record this way. Um, there's a little bit of uncertainty with the recording process right now. And I usually don't record from this angle. My phone usually sits boomed in that direction and I've got it boomed in this direction now and it's a little bit awkward because I am left-handed. Let's see if I can get a little bit better light situation going on here. Apparently not. Who knows? It's experimental. Let's have fun. So the first thing that I want to do is, I, now, let me just say this. I'm making a scabbard with incredibly big quotation marks here. This is not a how-to on how to make a scabbard. This is not good leather. It's not the appropriate thing for this blade. This is really just a better protection for this blade compared to... Actually, let's see if I still have it. I threw it away. I had an old cover on this thing and it was horrific. And I would stab myself through it if I just carried it. This blade needs just something better to be held in. Basically, I believe this is a First World War bayonet. Um, I know nothing about this. I've never made a scabbard before. Well, the, the prior one was cloth and some stitching. But um, I'm going to... Is that a feather? Okay, that's new. Okay. Um, I want to basically just create a scabbard um, to put this knife in. Okay, so again, as I said, this isn't a how-to video. If you want to see how to make a proper scabbard, go and watch proper videos with people who actually do this for a living. I do not do this for a living. I'm kind of guessing my way through the situation right now. I don't even know if this is real leather. It feels like... Nice and strong. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a few holes. And I'm going to sew around those holes. Just to hold. Good lord, this stuff's tough. One of the reasons I think this might be real leather, leather is because of how tough it is. Good lord. Well, this may also just be blunt. So, who knows? going on a journey with me. This may be the first time a trans person stabs themselves on camera for the purposes of art. Actually, that works quite well. The wiggle motion. Today you've learned if you want to stab through really difficult leather with one of these blunt things, use a wiggle motion. Um, as I said, I'm basically just creating eye holes. I don't have the proper equipment for this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over join these two together just to create a little bit of a lip for the top of the um, bayonet to sit in. Don't know if I've done that right. We're about to find out. This may be ugly. This may be beautiful. 
there's our first two holes. Now what I'm going to do is because this thing is a very weird shape, I don't have the ideal piece of leather. This is literally leather that I fished out of the trash. Um, there was this leather shop and they basically take all of their off cuts and they leave them for anybody who wants to, um, you know, take the, and I actually think I paid 20 Rand for um, like taking a handful of this, these off cuts. Actually, this works quite well. And because this is a bit of a weird uh, semicircle, it's not 100% straight, I'm gonna have to spiral this slightly around scabbard. Um, I'm wondering if I should, I shouldn't start with the point because the point is always the most difficult thing because that's the thing where if you don't make it properly the point slips through and I don't want that. Again, this isn't, and I'm going to repeat this because this isn't a, an instructional video on how to make scabbards or even how to make safe scabbards. This isn't intended for me to carry around. This is literally just a holder to keep it safe in my cupboard because go. Let's start with a point. So just did two pilot holes there. That's going to close like that. Now to stop. You're watching me full, you're, you're watching me figuring this out in real time. So welcome to the show. This might be the most ugly stitching in the world, but it'll be functional or something. Again, not functional, not claiming anything here. This isn't historical, I've never done this before. I sew, I crochet, I knit. And I'm applying completely unrelated skills to completely unrelated materials. There we go. There's the first thing you've seen me do successfully today. Thread a needle. I'm not going to do any fancy stitching here either because honestly I don't know how I'm going to you know what the best way to the best way to start is to start so let's start i'd say trust the process but i don't even know what the process is at this point so we've made an eye there and an eye there so that's going to be our point of folding when i excuse me if i also sound like <clears throat> i'm dying it's because i have horrific bronchitis that doesn't seem to be wanting to go away <clears throat> so i do i am coughing and wheezing here. But let's see if this works. Okay, so the idea is that's going to fold there, and that's what's going to catch my point. Oh, I don't bash everything. What I also want to do is I want to catch this point here. Did I actually stab it all the way through? I did. Clever girl, Charles. Maybe I should have tacked those two other points in place before I even started this. I think that's a good idea. Now the other question is, can I pull this all the way back through? I can. Okay, so let's just secure this. Again, sorry for the bad lighting. I'm waiting for the power to go out. The power suddenly goes out. It is expected. This is the worst way to sew. <laughs> I'm going to stab myself. Maybe just... This really is the worst way to do this. I wonder if I shouldn't just make bigger eye holes. Hmm. Let me think about this for a sec. 
Okay, so <clears throat> what I figured here is is that if I actually stick this all all the way through, give it a good wriggle, I can get quite decent eye <clears throat> eye holes here. I am battling against a material I'm not hundred percent sure on, but honestly. I've had worse progress on a project before. And as far as not knowing what I'm doing goes. <clears throat> the worst thing that can happen is I'm going to destroy a perfectly terrible piece of leather. Leather. Okay, let's make a nice knot around here. <clears throat> Again, uh, apologies for the wheezing and the coughing. Um, I have the plague. So I see now that's better. Now we can actually sew through this. I'm going to secure this nicely because I actually think. This isn't going to look fancy, it's going to look cobbled together, and I've come to terms with that. Okay, so there's those two. Actually, let's tie it off properly. You know what, always give it an extra one. If you're unsure, double knot. Okay, let's find that other eyelet. Right over here. The other problem with this is that because it's so furry on the back, it keeps closing up if you don't reopen it the whole time. I actually suspect this might tear if I overwork it too much. Okay, so that's gonna go over to here. So hopefully this will contain the point. work in camera. don't have the greatest setup here in terms of filming, but Ooh, what am I doing? I have no idea what I'm doing. That's, that's where we're going to attack. <laughs> See, the other problem is that as you do this sort of blanket stitch, um, you do get very knotted up. The, the other idea is, is that as I go, these are going to be like my basic, I'm going to do three pins. And uh, as I go, I will, do you know what, I fake it. As I go, I'm going to create more and more attach points so that what happens is is that what individual stitches lack everything makes up for like this would never hold together on its own this thing would rip if you dropped it or bumped it but put quite a few of these in a row you can actually make quite a strong attachment point well, attachment points. It's not bad. Snip, snip. I will be cleaning up all the edges later. But, so the idea is, it's going to sit in there, like that. And that's not going to go through unless you put some real effort into it which I will not be doing. So the other midpoint is going to be here. I wonder if I shouldn't do the two extreme ends first. I think that's a good idea. Do the two extreme ends first because this thing curls. Um, if I've done, 
I've got a good foundation, you can kind of fix it in the middle. I'm trying to make it look like it's going to be even. It's not going to be even, but, you know, as close to diameter as possible. I even wonder if the purpose of the eye here is that you could put thread into it and somehow weave with it, but I haven't the faintest clue what I'm doing. I did look up tutorials. There were band saws and um, expensive leather and stitching machines involved, and um, that's where I nerfed out of that whole debacle. Oh, come on. Swords and scabbards, and I am vexed by a thread. Oh, good heavens. Breaking all the rules of good sewing here. But this is not good sewing. This is something far worse. This is arts and crafts. Quake in thy boots. Okay. There's a good tack. So let's get those lined up. And what I'm going to do is, as well, is once I'm done here, I'm going to take all of these edges and actually seal them with a little bit of acrylic and glue. So what will happen is that whatever fraying does take place, because there's always fraying, it will be protected. Yep. So there's the basic idea. Like here you can see the curve that would happen. So in order for us to Not that bad of a curve. If I just go straight across, I don't even have to worry about it. Hmm. Idea. Okay, best way to do this is just to do it. You know that whole measure twice, cut once ideology? It's fantastic ideology. Look at me not following such sage and good advice. Bin. Which I'm rather surprised the power hasn't gone out yet. Snip. Trying to do this all on camera. Very weird from this angle, so I apologize if I am out of frame. I'm quite bad at speaking on camera, or at least I forget to, so I'll probably just speed through all of the areas that are me frustratingly. Oh, and me bumping the camera. Okay, so. Probably don't do this with two sharp things in your hand. Probably finish with the one sharp thing in your hand before you carry on with the next sharp thing in your hand. Excuse me. <clears throat> Same thing again. Oh, good lord, listen to me. There we go. One of the reasons this isn't going to look great is because it's an uneven length here. 
Wow, did I actually push that into my thumb? Coming close to meeting my video goals. There we go. Oh, that's ugly. What's going on here? Oh, just a tail. Not a smash. Again, all of these bips and bobs and ends and evens will be waxed and glued. Big for, I'm a big fan of when I've done woodwork, um, I don't just use, um, you know, uh, glues and stuff like that. I quite like to use wax as sealants as well. It makes things glow in different ways. Is it recommended for all projects? No, by all means not. But, see, we're off to a very, very good promising start here. This is already much better than what I was working with before. You see, the problem was that because the previous thing was just fabric, This would tear straight through, but this, so this is, okay, to give you an idea how bad the previous scabbard was, this is already stronger and more protective. Again, scabbard, not claiming. Actually, I just opened my bin. Here it is. Here's the old one. Look at it. It's this material. It's very similar to den denim. I actually have no idea what it is. And I just sewed it around it, and it worked for a while until it didn't. So I'm going to make tacking points along here, and I'm going to sew along the edge of the blade, making it more and more snug, so that it can sit nicely inside of the scabbard. Again, not a scabbard, just a thing that I put a blade in for safekeeping. Arts and crafts. Right. So, since we've done such a good job, getting a starting point here. Now you'll notice I've left quite a lot here. I actually want this to fold over like this. Actually, I should probably do this first. I want this to fold over just a little bit. This is going to be like the collar. Do you know what? I, I genuinely want to cheat. Lovely thing about arts and crafts. If you're not 100% sure what you're doing, cheat. If nobody sees it, nobody can judge you. Unless you put it on YouTube, in which case judge me as harshly as you like. You will find I do not care. Will it hold? No, but I will stitch it at some point. Or not. Who knows? Let's see. Okay. Let's just give it a good little stretch out. Oh, there we've got the little nice little sleeve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark all the point. Okay. This is a little bit uneven. Wonders of craft. You can just rip it. Actually show you what I did there. See this was folded a little bit too low. Didn't like that. We're gonna pop a little bit more super glue in here. Fold it much, much higher. Get super glue all over your fingers. It's you've unsuccessfully worked with super glue if you haven't gotten it all over your fingers. One of the jokes is by the time I've stitched along here quite a lot, um, I may even cut off excess fabric here. Fold it wrong, rip it open. Is it going to look great? No. Who cares? There we go. Just hold it in place for a second. Oh, but that looks horrible, Shaw. I will cover it up with something. 
It's nothing that beats Confix. <laughs> oh my word. There's people from my youth that if they'd heard me say that, they'd probably kill me. Okay. So because I'm struggling with doing each of these edges, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two. like that next to each other. By the way, I have no idea what this sounds like. So if I sound fantastic, you're welcome. If I sound terrible, you are welcome. Right, so, and we are back. So I've tacked along the entire edge of the scabbard. So it slides in and out easily. It's stopped by the point there. But this is very weak. So my problem is that this side is longer than this side. So I want to fold it over this way. But this side is the opposite problem. So what I eventually want to do is I want to twist this in this way that it sits nice and snug. And <clears throat> I wanted to do some, you know, fancy, am I going to sew this, but... Um, I'm fairly certain this is going to upset some people, but I am tired and that seems to work. That also soaks really well through whatever. If, if this is real leather, apparently leather soaks up. Oh, and of course, a little bit of super glue. Always have a good rag around. This side and I'm going to just keep all this nice and flat and I'm gonna do the exact same here the nice thing about this is that this will also protect one side of the stitches is this the best way to do it no is this the way it's gonna get done today yes I may actually just wrap this whole thing in twine as well just to keep it all nice and Together, not twine, what's the word? That other word. And then what I want to do is I want to get this nice and flat so the there we go. Actually while we're here. Actually, another thing that's very important that I haven't even checked is the problem with superglue is that it can overheat. Like if you've ever superglued um, or gotten superglue anywhere near cotton, um, particularly um, cotton balls, you can start a fire. So maybe next time I do this, I may not use superglue. But as I said, I'm tired, lazy, and I have no idea what I'm doing. So, oh, there we go, super glued my finger already. Now I knew from the, from the start that there's going to be twists and stuff in this. This, um, this was not the ideal cut of leather for this, but... This is actually already, uh, putting, putting aside the fact that I have no idea what I'm doing and I didn't have high hopes for this, this is already in a much better direction. This, the, the tip is nice and safe in here. I'm going to clean this up now. I, I like this. Why do I like this so much? It's like... Hmm. Okay. I'm going to go and get that rope I was talking about, and I will be back with you in a sec. Right. Right, so due to the fact that I <clears throat> don't actually believe that the power is going out tonight, even though it's supposed to. Um, look, candles. Um, 
I have now got my phone back boomed on the right side. This is the rope I was talking about. Not the strongest stuff, but um, I think it will work well for this application. I'm going to take quite a bit of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start wrapping it around. By the way, this stuff makes fibers like all hell. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start wrapping it around this scabbard now. This is going to determine the tightness. Now, I don't want it to be too tight. I'm going to have a little tail. I'm going to start wrapping it around. And then do this. A diamond pattern it. What this will also do is it'll prevent the blade from going deeper into the scabbard than I would like. I'm going to do this twice, but I'm going to stop here for now. I shouldn't just, you see the problem is that when you tangle it, well, <laughs> when you unwrap it, <coughs> there's a tendency of getting incredibly tangled. So let me give myself quite a bit of length so I can actually cut it off the edge of the table so that I can do it in between. Actually reinforce this point maybe a little bit more than it really needs but that's the part that was bugging me the last time, so... And right there. I really like this. Look at that. It's going to give everything just that little bit of extra strength. I just want to make sure that the sword... Ugh, the sword... That the bayonet can slide in and out. Again, not tying it too tightly. I want the sword, oh, the sword. I want the bayonet to be able to come in and out. Um, what I do, however, want to do is make sure that this does get a little bit of purchase on both sides. Snippy, snippy. Gluey, gluey. every intersection touch of glue Let's look at this point a lot of glue there let it rest for a second <clears throat> there's quite a bit of fumes here so I think that um, my earlier guess about the amount of reaction with these sorts of materials is in fact a problem that I should probably take into account. But hey, arts and crafts, what you gonna do? Please, folks, work in well-ventilated areas. Do not do what I am doing here. Um, don't do anything at home. Uh, severe disclaimer, I should probably put that in the beginning of my video. Okay, hold on, I'm just gonna wait here. Or the glue to do its thing. I'm actually going to stop recording because I'm just going to be recording me making you watch glue dry. And here we are. This is about as far as I'm going to take it because honestly I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm actually really impressed that given how little I know about the subject of 
anything I've touched in the last two hours. Um, I'm actually really impressed with how far I've come here. There's still a lot of really, really wet super glue on here. But um, it's a good fit. It's nice and snug without being too tight. It doesn't get stuck in the scabbard. Um, the point is nice and protected. This is a, I mean, okay, hold on, I'm digging in the trash again. Compared to where I came from, um, actually, let me just show you. See my problem? Here, no longer a problem. Nice and protected. Um, this is folded about four times on the inside and glued and tied. And because I've tied it here, the point can't go past there. It's being held in place. Theoretically, put it this way. Again, this isn't a safety instructional video. This is just me messing around to make something that'll protect this particular piece for my own sake. I'm not teaching you how to make historical anythings. Um, this is more for my own entertainment and for your entertainment if you like seeing me getting super glue all over my hands. Um, but if you've stuck with me this far, thank you for watching. This has been weird. This is an old bayonet I got, um, good lord, in Quasilu Natal ages ago. And I've just really wanted, you know, a better way of... This is, this is also nice because you don't cut yourself by... <laughs> it's not that sharp. If, if You can cut with this. It's not that sharp. Um, back, I mean, it's not that sharp, but if you are rather, you know, silly, you can... Uh, cut yourself with it, but I'm I, I'm waffling. What do I know? What, what do I want to say? Um, thank you for being here with me tonight. Um, the power was supposed to go out, so this was all supposed to be done by candlelight. So I'm actually kind of grateful that I didn't have to do this by candlelight. But uh, here we are, and uh, thank you, wonderful folk, for being here with me. And I hope you have a fantastic evening onwards.